This is devlog number two for the URL town project. And this one is going to get a lot more into the technical side of things, including how NX is providing a huge amount of value in my development process. But first, a quick recap of what this project even is. Uh, it looks a little different to last time, and the alpha version of this is officially available now, so you can just head to urltown.io to try it out for yourself. The basic idea is that this app encourages single tasking. Uh, you can associate a group of URLs related to various tasks or projects with a particular location in this game world. For example, if I want to check my emails, I go here and it will launch my emails for me. If I want to work on my game dev stuff, I would go to this location and it will launch all of my tabs related to that. For video creation, I go here. For consulting work with one of my clients, I go here. Uh, for research and learning, I go here and so on. So a key idea is that if you want to leave one task to go work on another task or project, you need to actually physically leave one location which will close down all the tabs you have open and go to the next. So whilst this adds some friction to encourage single tasking, it also makes it easy to save and retrieve whatever tabs you are working with at a particular location. Each time you can choose to start either from the initial set of tabs you defined for that location, or you can reopen all of the tabs you had open when you last left that location. Okay, so into the technical side of things, and what I want to focus on primarily here is my use of an NX monorepo. Now I use NX monorepos a lot. I generally default to it, even if I am building just one small app. A lot of the time that is just because I like the structure and tooling NX provides, but where NX really shines is when you need to coordinate and share code between various apps. So I've done more in-depth videos on structuring projects with NX or NX style architecture before. So I'll link to those for more detail but it's going to help to have a basic understanding of the NX approach. So I'll cover that a bit as we go. So generally with an NX monorepo, you have all of your apps inside of a single monorepo that all share the same dependencies defined in a single package.json file. We can see here that I have four apps in this monorepo. The hometown app, which contains the core Angular and Phaser app that runs the game world. The hometown manager app, which is another Angular application that handles the UI for the browser extension. And then I have both a hometown Chrome extension and hometown Firefox extension, which contain the browser specific extension code. And currently only the Chrome extension is complete. I still need to build the Firefox extension. The recommended NX approach also involves splitting up code from your apps into libraries. This typically means the app itself is just a lightweight shell and it pulls in most of its code from the libraries defined in the monorepo. A library might only be used by one single application or it might be shared among multiple applications. Typically, I organize my libraries like this. I have folders for each individual app that will contain libraries that are only used by that one app. And I have a shared folder that contains libraries that are used by multiple apps. In this particular case, and I don't typically do this, I have added a further hometown grouping folder within the shared folder. Hometown, by the way, was my original name for this project. So this is because for this particular monorepo, I have a lot of code that will be shared among my various apps related to the URL town project, but they wouldn't be shared with any other apps. There are also typical types of libraries that are recommended with the NX approach. And these are typically feature, data access, UI, and utils. Feature libraries contain the core features of a particular thing, uh, maybe a smart component for a login page, for example. Data access contains code related to accessing data. Uh, in an Angular context, this might mean your services. UI contains UI code like DOM components and utils for whatever utility and helper functions you might have. So I generally stick to this structure, but there is some wiggle room. So let's take a closer look at my library structure. So we have our hometown grouping folder, which means these are libraries only used by my main hometown app. In here, I have an additional grouping folder for each feature within the application. So since this is predominantly a phaser application, each feature is essentially a scene in the game. As you can see, I have a boot scene, preload scene, main scene, and so on. If we drill into this a little further by looking at the main feature, we finally get to the actual NX libraries. These libraries are generated by the NX generators. You don't just create all these files yourself. NX will create this library for you. So I have the feature library here that contains the code for setting up the scene itself. And I have a utils library with helpers related to the scene. Things like hiding and showing text, adding collisions with the physics system and so on. 
In this case, this feature does not have any UI or data access libraries defined. Most of the code for the main app is in these libraries. Uh, if we were to look at the actual app, we would see it is just an Angular app with a single app.component file. Whilst there is some code in here, probably more than there needs to be and should probably be refactored out into libraries, the main role of this component is to initialize the phaser game and pass in these scenes which are loaded from the libraries. From there, everything is just loaded in from the libraries. The app shell just kicks things off. If we now take a look at the libraries for the Hometown Manager app, we can see it has a simpler structure. There is really just one feature for this app. It's just an interface for setting URLs in a text box. So there are no feature grouping folders here. We just directly have three NX libraries, data access, UI, and utils. So the data access library contains a couple of Angular services. The UI library contains the Angular components for the UI. And the utils folder contains a directive used for listening for events from the game. So the shared folder is a bit more interesting and it's typically where I break the NX convention of feature data access UI and utils the most. I have more weirdly named libraries in here. We have the hometown grouping folder here, which I already mentioned is used for libraries that are shared among the various URL town related apps in this mono repo. For example, this is a great place to store the types and interfaces that are shared by all of the URL town apps. And I also use this to share an Angular service for handling communication between the apps. But then we get into what I think is the really powerful thing about NX. Different apps will have different levels of possible code reuse. There are still benefits to creating NX libraries even if you only use that library in one app, but you get the biggest benefits when you are able to reuse libraries in multiple apps. For this monorepo, there is a lot of potential for code reuse. I'm not using this monorepo just for my URL town apps. It is going to be used for all of my future game dev projects. So you don't necessarily need to preempt what you will reuse because you can always refactor later. And that is especially easy if you are already putting your code into libraries anyway. But there are so many things in this project that I am going to be able to reuse and I have preemptively put into shared libraries. I can share assets like sprites for characters, environments, and so on using this assets library I have. I created fly controls to move the camera in this project. So I put that into the shared library that I can reuse in future projects now. The controls for the character are another thing that is easily reused. The code for setting up the tile maps that I'm using, methods for calculating distances in game, interacting with objects and more. So rather than constantly re-implementing everything, I can just easily reuse the same code next time. And it's not just about the time saved on reuse either. Naturally, I will refactor this stuff in the future. So if I make an improvement to some of my shared code, all of my existing apps that use that library are going to benefit from that improvement as well. The final big benefit I'm getting from NX here is the use of their executors and general tooling. There is a bit of coordination going on here because I have these four different apps that ultimately form the one product. So if we go to the project.json file for the extension app, you can see that I have set up this prepare target. Basically, this performs every step I need to have all of the applications build and copy all of the assets I need to actually distribute this thing in the Chrome Web Store. This target will build the extension itself. It will then trigger the prepare target on the Hometown Manager app, and it will copy all of the assets I need to the correct location. If we then take a look at the prepare target for the Hometown Manager that we are triggering, you'll see something similar. This triggers a build and also then copies the built assets from the hometown manager into the Chrome extension. And then the Chrome extension can inject those files as content scripts, which is how I am able to inject the Angular application into the running web page when someone installs the extension. So this part of the process could probably be improved. For example, I could write my own custom executor instead of just doing everything with run commands here, but it works fine for now. So hopefully that gives some perspective on where NX can be useful and why you might want to use it yourself. And this is also still pretty small potatoes. Uh, you can have hundreds of apps in an NX mono repo and have all sorts of things configured to ensure a fast, consistent and safe development workflow and deploy process. If you found this video useful, uh, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And if you want to try out URL town for yourself, I'd love to hear your feedback. All right, that's it for now, and I hope to see you back here for the next video.